Here in the town of Hawassa, we've been working on the problem of donkey carts. They're really important to the local economy, but people only started using them recently, and designs are mostly locally made copies of each other. Nobody's really had time to redesign and think about donkey welfare. And they carry massive weights, um, sacks of, uh, well, everything. All the farm produce comes on the cart, uh, also all the timber that's moved around building materials, sand, gravel, cement, everything goes by cart in this country. As you can see the whole thing is uh, designed to be cheap, workable, hard wearing, uh, economic is the key. So we've got a big gap here which we're trying to drop down and if we can get that down to three or four inches that just lowers the whole load. If we move forward you can see how the shafts come in together here and sit on top of the donkey's back almost. Uh, they're, they're tied onto the saddle here, which means that when the donkey pulls, the saddle is actually doing, trying to do that, okay, because it's pulling from here. So it tries to tip. When he stops, the saddle's doing that. So what we get on a lot of donkeys is very nasty wounds in here. If this rubber here looks good, it's soft, it's pliable, it's smooth, but in actual fact, it is incredibly hot. And when the sun is shining on that, the temperature in there gets amazing. It, we put it on people's arms sometimes and I think the record is about 45 seconds before people are crying and ripping it off and their arms are covered in sweat. And you do that to somebody who does it for their donkey and they are amazed. If you talk to people around many of the countries we work in, they'll tell you a donkey does not feel pain. They'll also tell you that a donkey cannot be cured if it gets ill. Because the fact is a donkey will not show any pain until it's so ill, it's almost dead. The old practice was to go in with a vet-led clinic and treat the wounds. And that's fine, you know, we've been doing that for 30, 40 years, we've built up a good reputation doing that. But the fact is, if you don't treat the cause of the wound, every time you go back to that same donkey, you'll see the same wound. So we're trying to remove the cause. That's why workers from Kenya and Egypt have come together with local Ethiopian cart makers for Chris's design workshop. And we've been building three prototype carts with the local cart makers. They are good artisans. They don't need instruction from us, they just wanted some new designs. And on the first day or two we just chuck all the ideas in, give it a stir and we pull out what we like and chuck away what we don't. This design is an amalgamation of uh, UK ideas, Ethiopian ideas, Kenya, Egypt, everything. You can see we dropped the wheel down, here we've got a just a uh, four inch gap. Sammy here, Sammy has designed this sliding axle so we can adjust the balance on the front of the cart. If it's front heavy we can move the wheels forward, if it's back heavy we can move the wheels back. Um, we saw these on the other cart but you can see it better here, very lightweight design uh, compared with the whole back axle of a car that is normally used. So that's, they had that idea before, they were doing that already. If better carts and harness materials catch on, they'll remove the cause of so many donkey wounds. So it'll be a lot more comfortable for the donkey. We can't reduce the workload because the people are on the starvation line as it is anyway. Uh, they have to do what they do. They don't have any choice themselves. All we can do is try to make things better for the donkey, make it more comfortable, make the cart as light as we can, and just try and make the job as easy as we can for the donkey. By doing that, by getting the donkey into good condition and getting good harness and carts, you go back a year later and the people say, hey, I've got more money in my pocket. And say, how's that possible? You bought harness, you've got a cart, you built a shelter for your donkey, you are uh, buying food for it. And say, Chris, it, it just wants to work now. If we can do that in one village, in one town, we can then move on to another town and we can reach more donkeys. And also the people we leave behind are teaching people themselves. And so that gradually, very slowly, it's going to take a long time. I won't see it in my lifetime, but we will, we will gradually change the whole world for donkeys. That's, that's the plan.